since I told you that we work in a team and that we work in a European team, uh, I will give the floor to, to my colleagues from Spain. They will share with you their uh, implementation activities and how they see in Spain relevant this project. And in between my partners that will, uh, that will share with you their experiences, we also have guests that would like to bring their own perspective to see how our project can be relevant for their own activity. With this, Harvey, Deborah, you have the stage and also the microphone. No, thank you. Uh, bon dia, bon dia, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Kelly Vilata, the CEO of Ambi. We are a non profit organization who works for recovering prisoners and especially with mental health problems. No? Uh, for us, it's the first project in the European Union, so I'm so happy for our partners for staying here in the Missouri. Thank you, Diana, for inviting us and uh, the perfect organization. I'm so happy for staying here and our leader. Uh, but I want to start with you no know, half five minutes to try to, to do it. <laughs> uh, thank you for staying here and seeing us. Uh, for us, I mean, the position towards migration is based on the human rights perspective of migration and asylum seeking, seeking a fundamental right. As stated in the 13 and 14 uh, of the Native Universal Declaration of Human Rights Articles. Our philosophy also runs based on the idea of the alternative to the people. We are aware of the challenge which rise for the last year, geopolitical change and conflict, as well as the national political both global and European and national level. We have in our opinion contributed to the Tuka migration crisis. We are facing at the moment uh, in almost every European country. As consequences, we are expecting a rise in violent and strange linking to the phenomenon of migration and we need to address it. The focus we want to give of the training before and from an intercultural perspective based on a constructive dialogue and cultural exchange before we say we uh, have an attic in the, in the course, in the, in the programs, because we think it's very important to share uh, migrants and the uh, natives uh, personal or countries and to understand the difference. And on the idea that otherness is always source and earth for the enrichment for the civic community. Is it the same to have the science uh, to broaden the target of the training involving the civic community together with migrant people in order to create the basis for a mutual understanding and common dialogue? The training we have also started our experience in considering the concept of radicalization. As stated at the beginning of the project, adding for uh, some important factors amongst its causes, radicalization can be caused not only by the religious uh, factors, but also by cultural, political, and ideological is in the base of the, in the radicalization. We wanted to follow this path of the current experiments of society and in Europe in general. It's a big problem in actually. We decided to have the time amongst young starting the student on the context of the public education. We also involved uh, a second group formed by migrant refugees and people in a situation of social exclusion. exclusion. The methods used are based on non-formal education. And also, my education horizontality and interactive dynamics. We try to focus on the dialogue and ideas of China conflict, civilization, and the understanding of everyone's difference. On the same line, uh, on the same line, uh, the text try, uh, the treaty try to get the difference in uh, the different factors that have to contribute to the regularization, specifically identity, diversity, and uh, and religion, we have to focus on the human rights perspective and what it was a tool for a critical thinking for society. It's very important for us the uh, fighting uh, behind the stereotypes, discrimination, hyper speed, and Islamophobia. 
And actually, we think that the biggest problem is the many monopolization and the fake news is a big problem in Europe and, and in Spain. Actually, it's a big problem in the last uh, elections. For us, the, the general objectives of the course were and definitely as follows. And to rise our best tool of uh, violence, threatening, discourse, and ethics, complexity, and nuance. To promote the diversity and the intercultural understanding, we think is the solution of the problem. To provide uh, participants with knowledge, uh, attitudes, and skills in order to understand and recognize the factors and context uh, to lead to the violent extremists. For us, it's very important this question. We thought it was important to keep the example of the those experience and use non-formal education in order to create confidence with the students and the people who participate in the program. So we decided to have social workers. It was also important to have uh, with us non-right workers and professionals and experts from different uh, five taking part of the event of sessions. Having direct stakeholders involved in the training, mostly migrant refugees. With us, we uh, work uh, members of the refugee service uh, district, and the community, Spanish community of the migrants, and uh, people of uh, our company. I do think was the best way to tackle negative stereotypes on migrants, especially Arabs and Muslim people. We are very happy because the, the last month we started a new project for um, um, give, uh, teaching for the public workers with the Balance City Council and uh, using uh, the program of the uh, right. Uh, we are so happy for this event. I'm now continuing my colleague Deborah to talk about the, the, the objectives and the methodology of the project. Hello everybody, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the methodology we used that we think was one of the most important um, factors of, of the training. We insist on uh, non-formal education, as we said before, and uh, dynamic strategies. So the tools we used for whatever example are the visual tools because we think that with a video and with sounds you can get uh, specifically to young uh, audiences. Uh, mm, the new generation don't read, <laughs> I'm mean, sad, but they are more interested in video, so we thought um, that to introduce the, the subject, uh, there is loads of material available online, so we uh, started the discussion by putting a video and then we started the discussion, we found out that that was a very effective tool and also sounds used to be a strong, um, mm, it can bring a very positive message but it can also um, reinforce some negative stereotypes, uh, specifically in music that uh, in Spain people listen to a lot of reggaeton, or, but it's in every uh, music style, but there can be a positive message, but also if you analyze the world, it can be a strong tool to uh, dismantle some, some stereotypes. So we find out that the <laughs> So then we um, also did the cooperative learning um, throughout the entire training. We started uh, with a point um, where um, every discussion was uh, based on no absolute truth, not even from the trainer. So every opinion counts. The dialogue was built in a common sharing uh, of everyone's experience, listening, and respect of everyone's idea. And then we used uh, group dynamic and participatory methods. Um, as we find out that it's easier to work in a smaller group um, and then people are more comfortable and also a um, role plays where you have to experience someone else's um, reality that is different from yours is a very effective, effective uh, tool. Um, and also about the social effective approach, we wanted to give uh, the, the learning process a uh, more holistic approach. So um, the, the, the people who organize the training really insist on this approach. So um, you are not just uh, giving knowledge, you are not just controlling the ideas of people, you are uh, causing a behavioral change that is what we want to achieve in society. So how to change our behavior and our attitude in society. 
So um, this is achieved through our collective experience during class. And um, so we, we uh, get in contact with issues and conflicts that are being treated. And we also introduce uh, uh, the, the games. So we, um, we try this, uh, this uh, playful approach in order to tackle serious issues. And for example, uh, we use our Islamophobia test, it was very interactive with the students. And uh, we built the last uh, session that we put together both the students and the asylum seeker, migrant people, and people in the same risk of social exclusion all together to solve our big quiz. And so this was a kind of playful and but we could tackle in a relaxed environment some quite serious issues. So uh, we found that it was quite effective. We have some picture from what we have uh, used as tools. <laughs> so the Islamophobic test is available also online. The, the online version is the one we use in class. So you, there are like very basic um, questions about um, stereotypes about Arab uh, people, Islamic people, uh, and so if you don't pass it, you suffer from Islamophobia. So this was, and it was kind of interesting to to see the reaction of, of the students. And then the last session, just some pictures. I mean, uh, it was a kind of big show. It was also very interactive. Um, a, a, a TV show, yeah, with the, the, the um, <laughs> and so it was at the end of the um, the game. They had to build uh, a sentence that is the sentence that, that we use in our uh, our project about integration uh, and inclusion of migrant people in the in the Muslim community. So what we get, uh, the conclusion we get is that uh, it was a very uh, positive experience. A total of um, a total of 85 people received the, the training. It was a very enriching and positive uh, experience. Uh, it proved to be a good exercise to think about our own idea of society and population, the different things that can emerge when two or more cultures coexist. We saw it as an opportunity to talk about interculturalism, interreligion, and break uh, negative stereotypes, both on migrants and on our own community. So, um, an ambivalent um, path. So, um, we say that uh, it was very important to consider all aspects of our organization, as as Father said. So, um, and then how the violence is constructed. So. Uh, construction of toxic masculinity, misconception of concepts about uh, migrant people, especially Arab and Muslim, um, foreigners and migrant refugees, the role of media and ideologies in all the, its uh, contribution to, to hate speech. And um, it was also important to, to construct the, to, to uh, focus on the, how we construct identity uh, and understand different point of views. Um, we um, thought it was very important to shift toward the, the human rights uh, approach uh, and diversity driven approach. It was important to include um, refugee people as, as um, teachers, so they were trainers, so that was the best uh, um, practical example of how stereotypes can be, can be uh, breaking. And also, this uh, non formal education methodology that we uh, proved that was very, very effective. So, thanks a lot for listening to us.